So my work's always been about uh, the environment and animals within it. When I was first asked to come up with some concept designs for this piece, um, I wanted to try and represent an animal that was really special out here. And immediately what came to me was the wedgetail eagle. I've always felt like whenever I've seen a wedgie out in the wild, it, it's just awe-inspiring and it stops me in my tracks and I can't really think of anything else. Well, I had a phone call from Conquery Shire Council and said that would I be happy to talk to an, an artist that they'd engaged previously to do painting and whatnot and would I mind talking to him about maybe doing a collaboration with him and looking at doing some sculptures. And I thought that sounds pretty cool so I said yeah no worries send him down so we, we leapt at the chance to work with him. Once I'd figured out that the eagle was something that I wanted to explore, I had to think about exactly where it was going to sit within the landscape. So John and I had a bit of a drive around and we, um, we identified a few areas along the trail that might be great spots where you might actually see a wedge tail. And we finally settled on a good sized rock, weighs three tonne. Once we decided, well that's the rock, we went and got our friend a crane, a trailer, went out, picked up the rock, loaded it, and brought it into our workshop. One of the things that I think um, is, is interesting about the finished uh, piece is that there's two different types of steel. So we've gone for a stainless steel beak, rest of the sculpture, which I think's really highlighted that focal point of, of its beak. The feathering, we're layering pieces of steel over each other like old time scale armour, which will turn rusty, which will inevitably be the colour of what, close to what the bird's real colour is anyway. Just to give it that, you know, a bit of complexity and detail. The boys just kind of immediately understood what I was getting at. They could physically unpack these conceptual drawings and you know, I think not everyone can look at a two-dimensional picture and go, oh yeah, like how about we spin it and we look at it from this angle and we'll have these things protruding out here. Like there was a real drive to want to like play, you know, and you need to be playful when you're creating artworks, you need to be loose. We like steel, that's our real passion, but in a small town you have to fix everything. So we, I always say, look, we'll repair anything except, you know, nuclear submarine. And that's really because we're just a bit far from the coast. But obviously you need to know how to make these things, so that's where those guys really come into their own. To fabricate and to build things out of steel, there's a certain amount of artistry in that it automatically to make things with your hands and turn them into something useful or repair something. But to be actually working with a full-blown professional artist is, for me, a thrill. For my son, it's a thrill, and we're wrapped. It's such an incredible opportunity to create something like a sculpture. I mean, I've created probably a, over a thousand murals all across Australia, and I don't often think when I'm making a mural of how long is this going to stand here for. I know it'll last for decades, but with a sculpture, it's, it's potentially going to be here for hundreds of years. And to think that maybe one day I'll have grandkids and they're going to bring their grandkids down here and have a look at this sculpture is huge for me. And hopefully everyone will enjoy it for years to come. Thank you.